Hi guys, uh, today I thought uh, I will make a video on uh, what kind of preparations a vessel has to go through before entering the dry dock. Now I have previously discussed this topic in uh, a video where I talked about preparation of oral examination for chief main candidates but I did not give a very comprehensive answer so I thought I will make this video try to give a comprehensive answer but even then you know different types of vessels require different arrangements so i cannot include all or every all the vessel types and everything i have just made a general video here and then you may have to add uh, some points depending on the kind of vessel you have been sailing on because there is so much to cover um, if i talk about preparing vessel for dry dock i'll have to talk about it for a couple of hours or maybe more and it will get very boring so i have just quickly tried to cover the points and again like i said depending on the type of vessel uh, which is going into the dry dock you may have to add to this video but just watch this video maybe it will help you in answering some questions so of course before you enter a dry dock you have to prepare some dry dock repair list uh, which basically talks about or rather involves a preparation of a systematic comprehensive and accurate details of all items uh, that require overhaul repair modification or inspection or testing uh, a dry dock repair list would be categorized under the following headings uh, some of the standard items repair items and modification items uh, make sure you are keeping uh, ready sufficient number of copies for all concerned parties that is uh, not only a copy for yourself but ship owner company uh, charters superintendent dock master workshop representatives foremen ships officers etc uh, in terms of draft and trim make sure that you consult the dock authorities on the draft and trim that will be required by the vessel before entering the dock now in many cases these are stipulated by the dock authorities of course because they position the block accordingly on which the vessel goes and sits now the dock authorities take into account the depth of water at the dock when the vessel is scheduled to enter and also the declivity that is the slope of the blocks at the dock entrance uh, in terms of stability make sure uh, that you check adequate stability is available because uh, if you have seen my videos on ship stability i talk about the loss of gm in dry docking videos now i have shown you dry docking calculations in three separate videos i'll give you the links to those videos as well in with this video but uh, when the ship takes through the dry dock as soon as it touches the block there is a loss of gm of the vessel which basically means a reduction of the overall stability of the vessel so you have to make sure that before you enter the dock you have adequate stability uh, so that when the ship uh, loses the GM, a virtual loss of GM takes place as soon as the vessel sits on the block, that can be compensated for. Make sure your free surface effects of the tanks are minimized either by emptying the tanks or filling them up to the maximum to the full uh, so that liquids are not free to be sloshed about in the tanks. Vessel should not be listed. Vessel should be upright as much upright as possible uh, and it should not be listed on any one side. Uh, in terms of structural features, make sure that you conserve the docking plan. The ma dock master should also be notified of the position of the bilge keels, uh, if there are any, the rake of the stem, the type and number of propellers, the position of the echo sounder transducers or speed lock transducers or any protruding log which should be withdrawn into the hull before the vessel sits on the dock blocks. Uh, in terms of inspection of the dock, remember in ports of doubtful efficiency, the master should, if possible, view the dock when dry and ascertain that suitable shoring arrangements are provided. This is after the vessel sits on the dry dock or sits on the docks uh, or the blocks rather, not docks but the blocks. And uh, once the vessel is dry or when the water has been drained out and the vessel is sitting comfortably on the blocks, the master and the senior officers should go down and uh, check that suitable arrangements are provided, shoring arrangements are provided, the key blocks have level top surfaces, are evenly dispersed and they are substantially constructed and are undamaged and more importantly the vessel is undamaged, the, the, the bottom of the vessel has been undamaged. Then in general preparation make sure all hatches are closed and secured, any derricks and cranes are secured as well. Inform the dock authorities in plenty of time of any projections from the hull of the vessel as indicated by the dry dock plan. Make sure you take a sounding of all ship tanks before entering the dock. Ensure that adequate fenders are rigged for the entry of the vessel into the dock. Some, now most of the docks have their own fenders which helps to cushion the vessel and prevent any kind of scratches or damages. But you may uh, put up your own fenders if required to do so. In terms of docking plan, well, the docking plan is the plan carried on board ships which shows the recommended position of the keel blocks and shores. Uh, also indicated on this plan will be the position of any external projections from the hull as I have stated before. Now either a separate plug pan will be available 
or the tank drain plugs will be indicated on the docking line itself. So if you know that uh, once the vessel sits on the dock, then you have some plugs at the bottom of the keel uh, and those plugs and the position of those plugs are shown in the docking plan. Otherwise, there is a separate plan which is uh, tank drain plugs uh, are indicated. Otherwise, they'll be indicated in the docking plan and you may uh, go and carry out some maintenance and take it out and then make sure that you put it back before the vessel sails out. Otherwise, your vessel will be taking in water when the vessel comes out of the dry dock and goes back into the sea. Uh, make sure that you bear in mind that uh, when you are reading the docking plan, frames of the vessel, frames are indicated from aft to forward. So the, from the aft part, the, the framing, the number starts from uh, whatever number, it's normally one, starts from one, but it starts from the aft part of the vessel and uh, plates, which are the horizontal. So frames are vertical, vertical plates, vertical uh, structures of, that are comprised of the ship. The ship has a lot of frames which are vertical steel structures and plates are the horizontal structures that are uh, comprised of the vessel. So the plates that are horizontally are numbered from aft to forward and plates are lettered from the garboard strip and upwards from the shear strip. So from the top it is uh, lettered from the garboard strip and from the upwards from and from the bottom it is labeled as for the shear strip. 